Investors have been raising their glasses to the world's most sought-after tipples, from Chateau Lafitte to Pichon Lalonde. This is uh, why, uh, this as wine prices have continued to soar on the back of growing demand from Asia and jitters surrounding more traditional assets. It pushed the uh, Livex Fine Wine 100 index up more than 30% year on year. So will the trend continue and which wines offer the best investment? Joining us now, Miles Davis, Fund Manager at Wine Asset Managers. Miles, thanks for coming in. It's a really interesting phenomenon uh, taking place um, in the wine industry at the moment. And it's interesting to see what the Far East is doing in this field and from your notes it seems they're not just buying the things that uh, you, you guys in the wine business would have been saying are worth buying, they're taking a brand and just looking for anything by that brand and so some of the years that haven't been very popular are getting, getting some good demand. Yes, so far it's been brand led um, and Lafitte leading that and the second wines of Lafitte and other Rothschild stable wines. The brands are spreading though, as the feet gets more expensive, it's making other top brands, the, mainly the first growths, um, look very cheap in, in relation. So Latour particularly and Mouton Rothschild have been catching up, Margot is still lagging and Haubriand also lagging. And some other really famous wines such as Cheval Blanc still very, very cheap and still pre-credit crunch prices. So um, it is spreading, definitely. Um, the feet has been leading the way and pushing the index and contributing a lot of performance to our fund. How much is this an Asian phenomenon? I was at a, at a, a vineyard, a chateau over the summer near Bordeaux and they, was, they, they were really telling me how strong demand was coming through from Asia. The demand from Asia is huge at the moment and the burst of growth from China particularly in the last two or three years has been extraordinary and whilst the Western world is still sort of hurting a bit from the credit crunch and stuff, Asia seems to be completely ignoring it and is all guns blazing right now. There's a very good reason for that though, Miles, and that's the fact that countries or jurisdictions such as Hong Kong have cut the tax from 40% on imports uh, of fine wine to zero, and that's why we're seeing this stunning move up the charts of the amount of auctions that are generating interest from areas such as Hong Kong, isn't it? There's partly that. It was 80%. They then cut to 40 and then down to zero. But just the appetite for wine in general has just, in mainland China, has just really taken off. When we started our business four years ago, the mainland China wasn't a part of it at all. And, um, and the appetite in mainland China for showing off with um, high prestige brands at corporate dining tables, just in restaurants, and uh, being seen to be owning and drinking these brands has really taken off. Look back to some of the past sort of real boom markets in wine. How, how, how long do they go on for? How far do they go? Um, well, on average, wine averages a return of 15% a year. Over the last, we're having a very good year this year, but we're only up 30%. Last year, we're up 8%. So the long term average is quite normal at the moment. I think on the long term, that can continue to go, grow. At the moment,